Hello, this is Haley McLaughlin with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching the Video Voters Guide. We, in conjunction with Metro East Community Media, are here to talk with candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Mark White, running for mayor, City of Portland. Welcome, Mark. Nice to be here. To get us started, Please tell us a little bit about yourself, why you're running for this office, and what unique characteristics you have among all the candidates for this office. Sure. Um, <clears throat> I've lived in Portland since uh, 1992. Um, and since then, I've done a number of different community um, organizing as well as advocacy. I've also sat on numerous city committees and commissions. And I was also president of my neighborhood association and co-chair of the 2011 Charter Commission. And through all of that, I kind of come to the conclusion that the city of Portland, our government, doesn't really work for everyone. My neighborhood in particular is probably a microcosm of everything that's wrong with the city. So I have a, a unique perspective, I think, as to what the city says versus what they actually do. And it definitely needs some some help and support. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. With the COVID-19 pandemic and the resulting devastation of small business, city employee layoffs, and housing displacement will be with us for some time. How would you seek to address the fallout, including the reduction in city revenue? Yeah, that's going to definitely be very tough. Um, and part of that, I think, is that we really don't know the extent of the issue. Like for example, today there was a release from three different countries in Asia that some folks are being reinfected. Now they're double checking that, but those kinds of changes that are happening, happening like on a day-to-day -day basis all need to be put together in order to come up with a plan. So <clears throat> one of the things that I think is really important, at least for myself, is to kind of help folks change their perspective of what it means to be progressive, which most Portlanders, I believe, consider themselves to be. So for example, um, to me, being progressive and liberal means putting a heavy emphasis on personal empowerment. And in order to do that, we need money for tools and programs for people to be able to live their best lives. So one of the things that I, I plan on doing is making sure that we go through each bureau and office, eliminate any waste, make sure that everything is being done as lean and mean as possible with as much um, positive outcomes and increase in services as is possible. My hope is that over um, a review of the entire portfolio, we'll be able to find enough money to fill the gaps that we don't have right now. But I suspect that if we're able to move back to close to way, where things were before, that business tax income will, will come up very quickly. Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are you satisfied with the current structure of Portland city government? If not, how would you change it? That's actually kind of the main reason that I'm running. So as I said, my, my time as co-chair of the city's um, charter commission in 2011 opened my eyes to not only a lot of corruption, but just the inability <clears throat> for our government to listen to Portlanders as to what they want. So <clears throat> the next Charter Commission is coming up very soon. It needs to be set either by the end of this year or right after um, 10 years from when the last one ended, which was I believe 2012 in February. <clears throat> so um, folks can go to my campaign site if they want more details about the Charter Commission. <clears throat> but my intention is to make sure that the upcoming Charter Commission has every protection and is supported in every way possible. They will be able to talk to Portlanders about what they want their government to look like. What I want really isn't that important because my job as mayor is to implement 
what Portlanders want as far as their structure of government concerned. So there's actually tons of things that we can do through the Charter Commission to affect our government structure. Um, and I'm going to be doing a video in the near future to kind of outline some of those possibilities. Uh, right now on my site, I have, um, <clears throat> say, for example, a, uh, a mechanism for creating elections that have no money involved at all. So there's all kinds of different things that we can do, and the Charter Commission is the thing to do it. But we really need someone at the top to guarantee that there's no interference um, with the Charter Commission like there was in 2011. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How would you address the public's significant concerns about police community relations, use of deadly force, and officer accountability? Right. So, again, while the Charter Commission is doing its thing, my intention is to have all of the bureaus and offices underneath the mayor's office, but have the entire city council working together as a team in order to address and, and conduct oversight. So that would change the current format from having one police commissioner to having five. Plus, my intention is to have all that oversight done in council chambers, open to the public, and recorded for public access. So people will be able to um, chime in during those processes as we kind of figure out how things work, or rather will work better. That also, I think, will make it much better as far as police accountability is concerned, because the discussions that I think normally would happen behind closed doors will be out in the open. Uh, one of the things that I do hope to do is to um, <clears throat> try and implement some kind of um, continuing education for police officers, um, and that would focus mostly on de-escalation techniques as well as um, use of less lethal force. And it's one of the things that we really need to get a handle on because it's just kind of unacceptable at this point. The city's park systems face serious financial challenges, even more so since the closures caused by the pandemic. What ideas do you have for securing the financial stability of our well-loved park systems? Well, one of the things that I think we need to do, again, is to find out what the money is going towards and how much. For example, there was a park in Southeast Portland um, <clears throat> that was developed for $35,000 because the community members in that area did a lot of the work. And someone at city, uh, the, the manager at that time, was willing to find ways to make things happen much less expensively. So I think there's ways of kind of cleaning things up um, monetarily wise, that will allow us to do a lot more than what we're doing right now. But one of the things that I really, really want to focus on is to make sure that those who don't normally have access to recreation pay the lowest price possible in order to be able to take advantage of all of our community centers and parks. But I also have a couple of program models that will increase the number of volunteers that we have exponentially. One of them being the Portland Youth Corps, which is a two-year tuition-free online college degree for Portlanders age 18 to 21 in exchange for community service. So that potentially can add thousands of young people every year doing volunteer work across the city. Now that can also be perks, but it can also be things like, um, in my neighborhood, there's like, over 50 adult residential care facilities. And a lot of those facilities have folks who, who are trying to be more a part of the community. So those volunteers can help bring up those as volunteers to different kinds of things. And I have a couple of examples of that on my internet site. Great. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. This has been the Video Voter's Guide. Thank you for watching. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and ballot measures and exercise your right to vote.